Hello everybody, my name is Leo and this is a video I wanted to do since many years and it is all about my acoustic guitars, my Taylor 6 strings guitar, my Guild 12 strings and my Ramirez classical guitar. First of all, we will share a demo song using these beautiful guitars, then I will explain the main characteristics of these guitars and finally we will share how I record them. So I hope you enjoy and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. It's really gonna help me to make more videos like this. Let's start with a demo song. Hello once more, I'm Leo and I've always loved acoustic instrument. I think that uh, acoustic music has really a special vibe and intimacy to which I feel really tight. You can also reach a very high level of expressiveness in playing acoustic guitars as basically there is you and your instrument. You don't have amps or caps or cable and every nuances of your playing is gonna be captured by the microphones. Now, I'm not specialized in playing acoustic guitar or classical guitars, as my main instrument is the electric guitar, but I've always been fascinated by these instruments and I really love acoustic guitar oriented music, like uh, Phil Kiggy or Ralph Towner or Pat Metini or Martin Taylor or Tommy Emanuel. And actually the first lessons I took when I was a little child were classical guitar lessons. And so we may say that uh, these lessons are at the basic of my playing. I'm even uh, not an expert in recording acoustic guitars, but I just want to share with you my experience derived from many many years of acoustic guitar recordings. So that we can share some tricks and tips and you can also Write your suggestions in the comment below so that we can help each other to improve. Let's start uh, presenting you these uh, guitars, my family. The first one is my Taylor six string acoustic guitar. This is a 2001 Taylor 510 CE, which is a dreadnought with single cutaway with solid mahogany back and sides, spruce top, ebony fingerboard. It has a Fishman internal mic that was substituted by the Taylor own expression system since 2004. 
I actually love this guitar. It has a very natural acoustic sound, in my opinion, an amazing neck with pretty good uh, action and very nice mechanics that are pretty smooth and precise. And you have uh, heard actually this guitar in all my songs when there was a comping acoustic guitars. Now I have to say that all these guitar aging are becoming better and better. They improve their resonance, their uh, sustain year after year. Of course, there are some scratches here because I've used this guitar many times, but I think that is aging pretty well. I would like to uh, enrich my collection with the Martin 00028 that has a smaller body. And so in my opinion, it is a little bit better when you have to play solo acoustic guitar. But for comping part, I think that this uh, guitar is a pretty solid option. The second guitar I want to share, maybe the star of my acoustic guitar collection, is this Marvelous Guild 412, 12 strings. Now, this is a 1977 guitar. So she has more than 43 years and she is still incredibly amazing. I can't say how much I love this guitar actually. I bought this guitar used in 2004 and I think I did a pretty good deal as it is still in pretty good shape with the only exception of the neck binding that is a little bit ruined here. But I have the original binding here, so I can for sure repair it. Now, the F412 and the F512 are pretty famous, and maybe they are the most famous 12 string guitars ever made. Actually, also Ralph Towner played an F512. More specifically, the top is composed of solid spruce, while the back and side are composed of laminated maple and the bridge is constructed of rosewood. The three-piece neck is made up of mogany and maple, the combination of which add strength and splendor to the guitar. The neck has 20 frets, it's made of ebony, and has this beautiful inlays that really enrich this guitar. This guitar has an incredible volume and amazing sustain, and it is actually a joy to play. The last guitar I would like to mention is this Ramirez 2CWE. Well, Ramirez was my dream guitar when I was a little child, started learning to play guitar, and finally I was able to buy it, I think, in 2006. It has a solid red cedar top, an Indian rosewood back and sides, Brazilian rosewood headstock and bridge, ebony fingerboard, Spanish cedar neck and a Fishman Pro Blend electronic. And it is made in Spain. It is, I think, a pretty good crossover guitar, meaning that she's not necessarily meant only for classical guitar, but could be used for classical, jazz, Latin, pop genres, in my opinion. Now, let's talk a little bit about recording. I have this philosophy. If I have to record an acoustic guitar, which is the main instrument in a song, like the demo song for this video, I use two microphones. On the other hand, if the acoustic guitar is just used for comping, I use just one microphone. When I record with two mics, I use a Neumann KM184 in the neck, which is a small diaphragm condenser mic, which is gonna be focalized on capturing the high frequencies, and an AKG414 
or a Browner Phantom Anniversary Edition located more close to the body of the guitar here uh, to capture the body of the guitar. Let me show you what I mean. This is the Browner Phantom AE and this is the Neumann KM. So typically when I have to record the guitar The Browner is here capturing the body of the guitar and the Neumann is, is aligned with the 12 position of the neck of the guitar and it is almost 4-5 centimeters far from the neck and it is a little bit inclined in this way place in a way that it is capturing more sound coming from the higher string than from the low string. Because the main purpose of this mic is to capture high frequencies. While the main purpose of this microphone, in my opinion, is to capture the body and the mids and the bass frequencies. Another thing to point out is that this microphone, the Neumann, goes in a Millennium HV35, which is a pretty transparent preamplifier, while I prefer to send this large diaphragm condenser mic in my Universal Audio 2610, which is a valve preamp, to add more color, to have a more smoother and richer sound. Now, another very, very important thing to take into consideration when you record the guitar with two mics is that you have to avoid phase problems. If the two mics are not perfectly phase aligned, you're gonna ruin the sound, for sure. Now, in my experience and opinion, but this is not a general rule, I prefer to find the best sounding position of each mic alone before recording and to solve phase issues in post while mixing. For me, but this is not a common practice, it's pretty difficult to solve phase issue before recording, finding the right position of the two mics together. I prefer to find the best sound for each mic without caring about the relation with the other one before recording and then to solve phase problems while mixing. Let me show you what I mean going to my digital audio workstation. These are the two tracks where I have recorded the Taylor guitar the first one with the Neumann and the second one with the Browner. Let's hear how they sound. So as you may have noticed, uh, the high frequencies are lacking and the low and mid frequencies are much more present. Before starting EQing, I have to tweak the volume of the two mics. As I said previously, the Neumann has the high frequencies and the Browner the low and mids. So if I just enhance the volume of the Neumann and decrease the volume of the Browner, I'm gonna get more high frequencies. Without doing nothing with the Q, we have more homogeneous frequencies and more high frequencies. Now, the second thing I do is the phase, because uh, for sure these two tracks are not phase aligned. But before doing this operation that is gonna require to move the track I wanna align, typically I duplicate it and then I'm gonna move the duplicated one because I wanna keep the original position of the track as this one is gonna be moved. Okay, and as you may notice, they are not phase aligned. Here we have the wave downside and here we have the wave upside. So in this case, frequencies are gonna be ruined. So what I'm gonna do is I typically move one of the two in order to be 
phase align. And voila. And now phase problem should have been cancelled. Let's listen once more. Now I can start uh, EQing. Typically what I do is that I remove uh, the low frequencies from the Neumann track and I enhance the high frequencies. And I do more or less the same thing also with the other track where I try to keep bus frequencies to remove the muddiness that typically is around here. And I also enhance the high frequency in the browner track. But in any case, before EQing, my strong suggestion is to align the phase. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna work a lot with equalization, uh, trying to fix something that has to be fixed actually, aligning the phase of the two tracks. That's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a thumbs up, it would be our great help. And of course, you won't miss my future videos. If you're interested in the IRs I use, you can check out the link in the card above or description below. If you're interested in my music, you can check out a playlist of songs of mine in the description below, where there is also a link to the streaming service distributor that I use, that is DistroKid. Please let me know if you want me to do more acoustic-oriented songs in my channel. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.